The year is 1969. America has just landed on the moon. But have you ever wondered what really happened up there or what they discovered? The lunar module has touched down in what they called the Sea of Tranquility. The hatch opens, Neil Armstrong climbs down, heart racing, and takes that famous first step. A few minutes later, Buzz Aldrin joins him, looking around at the barren grey world and calling it magnificent desolation. Sheesh, who knew astronauts were so dramatic? Anyway, so first things first, what did the moon feel like? No one's ever asked me how I feel. I'm very well, thank you. What the f- Yeah, great. Uh, uh, right, back to the video then. Well, the astronauts test their footing. Instead of sinking into dangerous quicksand, they find the surface is quite firm, covered in a layer of lunar soil, kind of like a fine powdery blanket, which was created by billions of years of meteor impacts. It clings to their boots like flour and coats everything it touches. Later, back inside the module, they realise it even smells like gunpowder. Not exactly the scent you'd want bottled up in a spacecraft. I mean, imagine walking on a sandy beach after a long day. The moon is like that, only stickier, and even more impossible to clean if you can imagine such a thing. Houston, we have a problem. What seems to be the problem? It's just so sticky. I just, I just didn't think it was going to be this sticky. You, I mean... I mean, you, you look at the moon and you just don't think it'll be that sticky, but it is. Houston, hello? Is anyone there? Next comes the image burned into history, planting the American flag. It sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. The ground is much tougher than they expect. It was kind of like hammering a pole into packed concrete. So they managed to wedge it in, but only a few inches deep. And because there's no wind on the moon, NASA have had to rig a little crossbar to keep the flag stretched out. So when you look at those photos, and it seems like the flag is rippling, that's not wind. It's just the astronauts twisting the pole as they plant it. And this is the clip the conspiracy theorists love, saying, Look, the flag's moving. It must have been shot on Earth. But I mean, come on. If NASA had faked it on a soundstage, don't you think they'd have remembered to switch the studio fans off? There's no wind on the moon. That ripple is by design. So in other words, use tinfoil for cooking, not for making hats. But on a lighter note, when they take off later, the blast from the lunar module knocks the flag flat. The iconic image lasted only until liftoff. Now here's where the discovery part of the mission really kicks in. Armstrong and Aldrin set up a collection of devices called the Early Apollo Scientific Experiments Package. Very catchy. Try and say that ten times in a row. They don't look like much, just a few boxes and panels but the science they unlocked is still giving us data today. They had the seismometer. It detected moonquakes, some shallow, some deep, some lasting for hours. Oh, sounds like a good Friday night. This revealed the moon isn't just a cold, dead rock, but has a surprisingly complex interior, kind of like a goth or an emo when you actually bother to get to know them. Next, they had the retro reflector, which sounds kind of like an old games console. This one is actually really incredible. It's a simple set of mirrors, but scientists on Earth can fire lasers at it and measure exactly how far away the moon is. And here's the really cool part, we still do this today. Thanks to Apollo 11, we know the moon is actually drifting away from Earth by almost 4 centimeters every year. They also had the solar wind collector. It kind of looked like a shiny laundry line, but it captured particles streaming off the sun. It doesn't look too much different from someone hanging up their washing, except your laundry doesn't come back carrying the secrets of the solar system. Or maybe it does. Comment below if it does. We'd like to know that. So all in all, while the astronauts look like they're fumbling around with boxes, they're actually unlocking data that still shapes planetary science. And then comes the most important job, rock collecting. You guessed it, collecting rocks. Now hear me out. So what they did was they scooped lunar soil into bags, they chipped off nearby stones and stashed it all in containers. By the end, they have around 21 kilograms of samples to bring home. But here's where things get pretty interesting. Back on Earth, scientists discover that many of the rocks are basalt, proof that the moon once had lava flows. Others are crushed mixtures, called breccias, formed by violent meter impacts. Together, they reveal the moon had a far more dramatic history than that smooth, eerily quiet sphere we see from Earth. Even more astonishing, 
the chemistry of these rocks matches the Earth's mantle almost exactly. And this was one of the first big clues supporting something called the Giant Impact Hypothesis. The idea that the Moon was born when a Mars-sized planet slammed into the early Earth, flinging debris into space that eventually formed into the Moon. So yes, those dusty bags of rubble actually changed the story of how the Earth itself was formed. And here we are. After just two and a half hours outside, their time is up. Armstrong and Aldrin return to the lunar module, leaving behind their instruments, their footprints, and a plaque that reads, We came in peace for all mankind. Then they launch to rejoin Michael Collins into orbit, who stayed in Columbia, the Apollo 11 command module, dubbed the loneliest man in history due to his unique solitude orbiting the moon. Many people assumed that he'd be somehow bitter about the fact that he didn't actually step foot on the moon. But when asked about this, he said that his job was just as important as the other two. So whilst he didn't actually step on the moon, he definitely deserves a massive shout out. He was just as important as the other two. If you think about it, if it wasn't for him, it would have been a one-way trip. All told, they spent around 21, 22 hours on the lunar surface. But this was a single day that redefined human history. So... Let's return to the question we started with. What did the Apollo 11 astronauts actually do on the moon? And what did they discover? Well, they walked, they planted a flag, set up experiments, and gathered rocks. Simple actions on the surface, but each one carried profound consequences. They discovered the moon isn't just a dead lump of dust. It shakes with quakes. They discovered it drifts away from us, little by little. They discovered it shares a chemical fingerprint with Earth, revealing a violent shared origin. And here's the promised reward. Every time a scientist fires a laser at the moon, the signal still bounces back from that little reflector left by Apollo 11. A 55 plus year old experiment still running today. So for two men in rather bulky suits, with a schedule tighter than a school field trip, it was a pretty extraordinary achievement. In just a few hours, they turned the moon from a mystery in the sky into a place we could understand. And that was Apollo 11's greatest discovery.